will say the president, excellently the vice president, former vice president, all very important sovereign citizens here present. It is a presumption that states stability, national stability, rest on collective responsibility. And without the exercise of that collective responsibility, the security of national resources would not be ensured and development would be the casualty. The presumption has become a truism because of the presence of all these very important personalities here. But that collective responsibility must be contextualized. It is the role of government to serve the people. It is the role of the opposition to aim to serve the people. And that opposition may be different from the government in form or context. So there is nothing wrong in having an opposition. They have different roles. But essentially the discourse here is not to transform a dialogue into a partisan mechanism for discourse with the people. So if this discourse is to be properly situated. We must all put partisan hearts aside and look at the nation and deal with issues in such a way that the sitting government or any other government will deem those issues to be pertinent to the development of our country and the stability of the state. In that regard, we must bear in mind that stability of nations, stability of the state, use of resources must rest on four pillars. The first pillar is culture. Not our general culture, but the national culture. We have to develop, we have to have an educational system. There must be institutions of socialization. We must train the people who are to serve as service deliverers, the nurses, the teachers, the technicians of all sectors of society. And if we look at our civil service, these are the people who will constitute that service sector. We must train them, we must nurture them, we must nurture sovereign citizens so that we become one, independent of our sex, independent of our religion, independent of our ethno-linguistic groups. We must become Gambians. But to do that, we must train them. That is why the educational system must be interrogated. Are we really training sovereign Gambians? Are we really nurturing sovereign Gambians who love country and people? That is the trajectory. And those people are the people who would be the builders of the nation that we hope to develop. Number two, it is essential to have that social pillar. Honorable members here, Your Excellency the President, we all know that the issue of life expectancy is important. Look at the number of people who are passing away. How do we increase the longevity of their lives? We look at child mortality, maternal mortality, and it is important to improve the quality of our data because many people in our society have this privacy and respect for the dead that many will bury without informing the state. So how can we ensure that everybody who passes away would be recorded so that we have really improved data 
and know the causes of death so that we'll know how to really prevent many of the deaths. That is important. The issue of poverty. If we say half the population are living in abject, how do we address those issues? That is important. But we must have the data and then look for ways and means of addressing the issues of poverty. The next element is the economy. That economic foundation, all of us must bear in mind that there are imbalances between import and exports, imbalances between revenue and expenditure. We must take note of this. What is responsible for that? We look at remittances, they are in fact more than even our earnings from imports. So we must look at all this, and we must look at all these correlations in order to find out why are we not able to build an economy which will move away merely from taxation in rendering services to be able to build a productive base to be able to address all the concerns. These are issues, national issues we should address. Not only that it is important for us to bear in mind that the social issues are very significant, but we must move to the political issue, my last consideration. Because that is the state that we have to conserve. And we all know that overstay in office, unconstitutional takeover of office, have also been a disease in our sub-region and causing a menace. So we should sit down and look at these two issues on constitutional overstay in office, on constitutional assumption of office. How do we save the Gambia from such a reality? How can we debate on our constitution, which we should now put to the fore, because it helps us to build a polity that we own. And we can all discuss this in order to shape a future that we own. So my take here is that this is the beginning of a very important exercise. The beginning of a conversation among a people to determine the destiny of a country that we own. Inclusiveness is necessary at this stage. And inviting all of us here is starting the process of a national conversation to determine whether you are in office or outside of office, what is your role in helping to build a stable state, a stable country, the harnessing of resources in order for all of us to benefit. I don't know how much time I have, but I would like to put this across, that we are talking about management of resources. But the real issue is generation of resources and allocation of resources. In my home, every morning, women will come from all over the combos and descend on my street. And they are selling without urinals, without water, under the hot sun. Every single day, I cannot even get out of my camper. So what is the relation between central and local government? Is the structure that we have in resource allocation really the appropriate one? How do we ensure a balanced and proportional allocation of the resources of the land? Don't we need to change our budgeting system so that whatever is at the local level will be budgeted for at the national level and we allocate resources on that basis? Could we continue to maintain this type of local government structure? Is it sustainable? These are issues we need to look at.